tales for dark nights. This broadcast is fan-funded, so become a member at ChillingTalesForDarkNights.com and support our Patreon at Patreon.com forward slash ChillingTales. Step right up. Prepare to be unsettled. You have left behind your safe reality and fallen into darkness. <laughs> there is no escape, and there is no reprieve. Welcome to the Simply Scary Podcast, Season 2, Episode 7. I am GM Danielson, your guide through these twisted worlds of the most disturbed imaginations. And now on to our first act. Our first journey puts us in the company of five friends who engage in a bit of fun with a Halloween seance. They realize very quickly that what they perceive as simple games are far different when played with those on the other side. Jason Hill sets the table for terror along with the Simply Scary podcast players in Eric Dodds, The Witches, and The Circle. My great aunt had died the year before. Her house was locked up in probate until issues of inheritance were settled. My father was acting as caretaker of the property, which meant I took care of the place while my old man bought booze with my great aunt's money. Truthfully, I didn't mind. It got me out of my own place, away from my old man, and it made a nice place to have parties and hang out with my friends. My friend Chris loved the place. I think he also needed a place to hide, somewhere, away from his own house, with all his dead mother's things lying around, right where she left them, before some sleep-deprived truck driver snuffed out her life like a candle, or a store-bought birthday cake. Our big plan was to host a Halloween party just for our small group of friends. Chris quickly latched onto the idea of having a seance. He spent a lot of his time at the library or at some of the local used bookstores doing research. I told him it was no big deal, that it was just some stupid party trick. But he insisted on getting it right, as he said. I guess Chris was messed up about his mother's death. I should have thought about that. About why he was so concerned with contacting the dead. But he didn't talk about her very much. And as I've said before, I was stupid. There are things that happen when you're 19 that stay with you. You don't think they will, but they do. And if that's not the definition of haunted, well, then I don't know what is. I met Chris as he was walking back from the dollar store that evening. He was carrying several bags of Halloween candy, some chips, a few bottles of soda. He climbed into my car and I drove us to the house. He dumped the candy into a large plastic bowl and smacked my hand when I tried to fill some. Ah, that's for the trick-or-treaters, jerk. Ah. 
Trick or treat. As the afternoon faded into evening, the trick or treaters did show up, giggling in their Spider Man and Incredible Hulk masks. I doled out candy while Chris ordered pizza and set up the food on the kitchen table. More of our friends, that is, Pete, Liz, and Sophia, arrived by eight. I was excited that Sophia had shown up. <laughs> I had been crushing on her for months. But at 6'4", 140, with bright red curly hair, I looked like a scarecrow that tried to dress up like Ronald McDonald. Sophia was tiny, cool, beautiful, jet black hair and skin that may have never seen sunlight. She was my secret reason for having the party. I didn't stand a chance, though. But, eh, a guy could hope. Liz was Pete's longtime girlfriend. She was almost as tall as me, with a shaved head and several piercings, full sleeve tattoos on both arms. I'm pretty smart, but Liz... Liz was a genius. She aced every exam without trying. I was taking college-level classes in ninth grade. We had been friends for several years and had shared several classes at high school until she dropped out halfway through her senior year. The vice principal told her in no uncertain terms that she would not allow a tattooed freak, as she put it, like Liz to represent the school as its valedictorian. Liz. <laughs> Liz broke the woman's jaw in two places. That was pretty much it for Liz's public education. Pete was wrecked when he walked through the door. I had been friends with Pete since we were toddlers. His mother had worked with mine at the same hospital before my mother left town. I loved Pete like he was my own brother, but he had several bad habits. Self-destruction being pretty high on the list. He nodded his hello and then staggered to the cabinet where my great aunt kept her liquor. He liberated a bottle of peach schnapps. By nine o'clock, Pete had retired to the monstrous old red couch in the living room, with a cold cloth over his eyes and a bucket by his side. Chris and Sophia rolled up the large area rug, exposing the hardwood floor beneath. I turned to Liz as she and I shoved the furniture out of the way. Why is he overindulging? Failed his driver's license exam. Chris brushed his thick brown hair out of his eyes. Again? This is what, his fifth time taking it? I thought they gave it to you out of pity after five tries. <laughs> At least he didn't vomit blueberry pancakes on the instructor's shoes like he did last time. Chris stood up. Okay, everybody. Let's get started. Liz tried to get Pete to join us, but he was fast asleep. Chris returned to the room carrying a large wooden box. He opened the box and removed a small jar of salt and several candles. He motioned for us to sit in a circle, and he poured the salt in a double ring around us. He poured another, smaller double ring a few feet away in front of the fireplace. He then carefully taped down several pieces of paper, onto which he had previously drawn strange geometric symbols. I took the candles and positioned them at points around the circles, and then I lit them with my zippo. Chris motioned for us all to sit within the larger circle. He dimmed the lights and joined us. We took our positions around a small wooden toolbox. The circle was small. When Sophia sat next to me, her knee touched mine. I tried to concentrate on something other than her perfume. Chris folded open the top and removed a metal bowl which he placed onto a metal stand. He pulled some pieces of wood from the box, put them in the bowl, and then lit them. He pulled a fabric-shrouded object from the box and placed it in front of him. 
The dark cloth revealed a book bound in black leather, and when Chris opened the yellow pages, instead of being brittle, they turned with an odd ease. Chris flipped through the pages, and when he stopped, the sallow pages lay slackly open, without a hint of curling. He began a low chant in a sing-song rhythm. While chanting, Chris dropped wads of dried herbs into the metal bowl. Heavy, acrid yellow smoke billowed up, stinging our eyes. We stared at him with rapt attention. Ancient spirits. Ancient spirits, hear us. Ancient spirits, hear us. We beseech you. Ancient spirits, hear our call. Ancient spirits, answer us. Ancient spirits, come to us. Ancient spirits, the way is open. Ancient spirits, take this offering and come to us. Chris ran a scalpel, a scalpel that none of us had seen, across the palm of his hand. Oh my, oh my god, Chris! Liz recoiled in shock. The blood sizzled as it met the flames in the bowl. Chris shushed Sophia with a glare. Ancient spirits! Hear us! The way is open! Answer our... <gasps> we all jumped, including Chris. Through the door, we heard muffled voices. <laughs> Sophia huffed and rolled her eyes. The ancient spirits are here, and they want candy. I thought you turned off the porch light. She stood up and walked to the door. She flipped on the porch light and opened the door. Two little kids were standing there, both dressed like witches, complete with pointy hats and green masks. <laughs> they shoved their widespread pillowcase sacks towards Sophia. Trick or treat! Sophia looked around for the candy dish, then saw it on the kitchen table. It was empty, save for some wrappers. <sighs> Sorry, kids. We're all out. That's what it means when the porch light is off. The kids looked at each other for a moment. Can we come inside for a minute, ma'am? My sister really needs to use the bathroom. Sophia nodded and stood aside as two little pointy witch hats bobbed past. As the shorter of the pair went to the bathroom, the taller stood near the couch, next to Pete. She said nothing. It was very still. I found myself sneaking glances at her mask. It seemed far too elaborate for a child's mask. The black pits that hit her eyes seemed to drink in the light. There was a crash from the hallway leading to the bathroom. Chris and I jumped to our feet and ran to see what had happened. We found the smaller of the two children kneeling at the entrance to the hallway with her head tilted down. I'm really sorry. I broke the mirror on the wall. My hat is too big and it must have caught the frame. I tripped. I, I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> it's just a cheap old mirror. Chris extended a hand, his cut hand, I thought to myself without knowing why, and pulled up the younger girl. It's getting late. Your parents must be worried. Yes, it's almost midnight. Sister, we should be going. We turned to see the taller sister leaning over Pete's sleeping form. Green mask pressed close to his ear. Hey! What are you doing to Pete? She stood and walked towards the child. He was sleeping. The witch shrugged. Her rubbery, pointed green nose bobbled. I was telling him to have sweet dreams. 
The two children left, clutching their pillowcase sacks and jostling each other as they walked down the sidewalk. I watched them go, and as I saw them turn the corner, I think that I may have seen them both take turns licking the smaller one's hand. We shut off the lights and bolted the front door, relit a few of the candles that had gone out. Chris picked up his book again as we rejoined him inside the salt circle. <clears throat> Ancient spirits, hear us! Ancient spirits, we call you! Ancient spirits, hear our call! Ancient spirits, answer us! At the stroke of midnight, Chris sprinkled more sage into the glowing metal bowl. Ancient spirits, we beseech you! A candle went out. <laughs> Sophia snorted and put her hand on mine. My heart slammed to a stop. Then I realized that she was only trying to pull the zippo I had been fidgeting with out of my hand. She winked, then reached over to light the candle. Another candle went out. And then another. The room was plunged into murky darkness, only lit from the flickers of the coals in the bowl. Okay. Okay. The ancient spirits have heard our call and have responded. Chris shifted slightly and closed the box. On the top of the box was an ornate inlay of letters and numbers, in the style of a Ouija board. Chris drew a small white planchette from his shirt pocket and beckoned us to place our hands upon it. We moved the heart-shaped piece on the board in small, slow circles. Ancient spirits, are you here with us? Something crashed in the kitchen. I made as if to get up, and Chris motioned me to stop. Don't, don't leave the circle. Stay inside the circle. Never break it. Nothing can harm you if you don't cross the boundary. We placed our hands back on the planchette. Ancient spirits, are you here with us? The planchette slowly moved to a corner. Yes. Boards creaked in the darkened room around us. This... this is... this is too spooky, Chris. It feels like something's watching us. It... oh. Sophia looked down. In the twitching red glow of the flames, a shadow seemed to spread across Sophia's chest. She looked up at us and opened her mouth to speak. A flood of blackness flowed out of her mouth and down her chin. She slumped forward, knocking over the metal bowl. The burning coals scattered. Sophia! I lunged toward her. A smoldering coal burned my hand, but I didn't feel it. I could only think about Sophia's beautiful hair, and it was on fire. Chris rose to his feet. Get the lights! <laughs> He shoved me off Sophia, out of the circle. I scrambled to my feet. I could see nothing in the inky blackness. Liz was screaming over and over. A wall should have been inches away, but I felt nothing. I reached out frantically. My fingertips caught something. The sleeve of a shirt? It jerked away. There was a blinding, burning pain on my arm. I fell flat and away, clutching the wound. Blood soaked through the sleeve of my shirt. I crouched low, trying to see something, anything. I turned back to the circle. Liz's face, mouthing an O oh, of surprise, jerked backward. Her slashed throat sprayed blood across the room. It smelled like copper. I turned to the right with my arm out and ran. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
My hand slammed into a doorway with force. A fingernail peeled back and I dropped to my knees and crawled forward. My fingers met the cold steel of the refrigerator. I flung the door open, light flooded the kitchen, and I huddled in the corner, shaking. I heard Chris scream in pain from the other room. I snatched a heavy cast iron frying pan from the stove. My makeshift weapon raised high. I stood to the side of the doorway. Blood trickled down my arm and pulled on the elbow of my shirt. I heard the slow slide of footsteps. There was a low, whispering breath. I was paralyzed. What if it was Chris? Or Sophia? The light glinted off of the frying pan. My lips peeled back in a rictus grin. I grunted involuntarily as I swung as hard as I could. <laughs> the edge of the cast iron pan caved in Pete's face as if it were a Sunday morning egg. <laughs> He went down in an untidy heap. I swung and swung, bashing his head until it was a lumpy mess, until his body stopped twitching. Still clutching the pan, I ran to the front door. It took me an hour to reach the front door. The front door could not have been farther than 15 feet away, but it felt like miles. <sighs> As I stumbled and crawled to the door, terrible things whispered to me, laughed at me, mocked me. I saw the dim shapes scuttled away as I looked, eyes straining to see my attackers. They darted in and out and gouged my flesh with claws and hot, grasping hands. I flailed blindly in the dark with a frying pan, but they only laughed when I reached the door. It was locked. I smashed the antique stained glass with a blow and then climbed through it, lacerating my hands and arms more in the process. The official police report states that Peter McCulty, a 19-year-old Caucasian male with a record of prior arrests for law violations including vandalism and possession, was under the influence of a large amount of controlled substances, including traces of Adderall, Effexor, PCP, psilocybin, and certain others as of yet unidentified. When he experienced a psychotic break and killed several people, initially I was suspect number one. A police officer found me walking down the middle of the street, covered in blood and bleeding from dozens of cuts, fist clenched tightly around a cast iron frying pan. The police took a dim view of my story, and once it was determined that drugs had been involved, they ignored it completely. As far as the cops were concerned, a bunch of kids took some acid on Halloween. They played at a satanic ritual. Then one went off his rocker and killed a few of the others. It happens every Halloween, really. I was remanded into psychiatric custody for two weeks. It was only after I was released that I found out that the police had only recovered three bodies. Not four. They had never found Chris or any trace of him. I've never gone back to that house. Every night, 
I... I think about going back. I, I take my meds. Meds that make me forget. And suppress the whispers that are here in the long black hours before dawn. But sometimes I still hear them. Every year as Halloween approaches, the voices get louder. Even if I have my dose, they tell me such terrible things. They tell me that it was my fault. They tell me I was the one with the knife. <laughs> Can we not overstate enough the danger of meddling in forces you do not understand? Oh, you don't believe in all that hocus-pocus and nonsense? Well, I'm sure that Wikipedia page you read laid out all that you will need to know about your dalliances into devilish deeds. Score one for delusions of grandeur. After this brief message, we will offer something even more disturbing. Oh, hi folks, this is Archibald Carlyle here. Just wanted to let you know that what you're listening to here on YouTube is just a single story from our episode. You can find even more stories on the show at simplyscarypodcast.com for free. And then you can get the full extended version of the show at chillingtalesfordarknights.com forward slash tour. Become a member and you also get extras that you will find nowhere else on the web. So... Thanks for listening. Now, back to the show. Well, howdy folks, the other half here. You want this show to keep going, I know, I know. But we do that with your support. It ain't free, you know. So besides becoming a patron and a member, at ChillingTalesForDarkNights.com or Patreon.com slash Chilling Tales. You might be asking, hey other half, how can I support your form of killer broadcasting? I ain't got no scratch. Well, we've come up with other ways to help us keep this show dead alive. When shopping with Amazon, use the link ChillingTalesForDarkNights.com forward slash Amazon or SimplyScaryPodcast.com forward slash Amazon and a portion of your purchases go to keeping this Frankenstein's monster pumping with voltage. So remember, use ChillingTalesForDarkNights.com forward slash Amazon and SimplyScaryPodcast.com forward slash Amazon when purchasing through there to help promote fan-funded entertainment like ours. Now... Back to the show. The Simply Scary Podcast, Season 2, Episode 7. Become a patron today and you'll get the extended version of this show. Here's a sample of the extra stories you get when you become a member. I was startled awake by ragged screaming coming from the bathroom down the hall. I jumped out of bed and ran. By the time I made it to the door, Ryan and Rachel were there too. <laughs> he decided to soften his new company up. Without warning, he charged the boxes and threw his full weight at them, sending them crashing against the wall and pinning the thief. Satisfied with his handiwork, the owner walked around the corner, looked into the thief's panic-stricken eyes, and slammed his knee into his witness's head, knocking him unconscious. The man thought maybe he would just let his new company stay in one of the boxes overnight. After all, he already had a live one. Become a member today. Go to simplyscarypodcast.com forward slash tour to get more horror than you can handle.
Remember, it is extremely important that you allow the ads to play through in our YouTube videos and occasionally click on them to assert your view. What in Vlad Tepesh name is going on here? I was just about to tell the audience how important it is for them to take the time to allow the ads to play on the videos. Well, GM, that would make us pretty prescient then. Because we just happen to have two advertisers right here. We figured they would be the best to explain to the folks about this advertiser boycott thing affecting the YouTube community. But, but we... We told you we aren't advertisers or a company. We just both happen to have the last name Johnson. You moron! Look, don't try to weasel your way out of this. You guys made quite a splash with your little temper tantrum, and now it's time for you to pay the piper. Or a fool and his money soon parted. Oh, oh, how about uh, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush? Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oh, fellas, idioms aside, if I may ask, what the hell are you talking about? I mean, really, did you seriously go out and just take two people off the streets because their names happened to be... No, of course not. We had to break into their homes and kidnap them in the dead of night. And man, I was not prepared for how expensive chloroform is. Jeez. Look, just let me usher out the audience, and then I will deal with you two. Please, mister, you gotta help us. Be positive. No, I think I will keep you around. Be positive makes for an excellent Bloody Mary. <laughs> Holy crap! Did you just tell that guy's blood type by taking his pulse? Man, you are vicious. <laughs> now, remove them from the fire and take them to my dungeon. <laughs> um, whatever you say, Count Darkula. <laughs> you guys were better off with the spit roasting. Wait, you... What? <laughs> Sorry for that brief interruption, listeners. We are all dealing, and I do mean all. Horror readings by GM Danielson is included. With the current YouTube situation in our own special ways. And unfortunately, it cannot be overstated that we need your support now more than ever. So why continue waiting? Why let the others experience it all and remain in the dark? Take the risk. Become a patron today at ChillingTalesForDarkNight.com forward slash tour and take the tour. You will get an extended version of this very show, plus more of our special brand of horror entertainment. And now it is time for our favorite part of the show. I am going to do a two-for-one deal today only. I am reading two comments, yes, two, that work perfectly together. This episode's winning YouTube comments are from Maddie A. They write, I wanted to thank you guys for everything you do. I am a stay-at-home mom, and I look to you guys to help me get through the days of screaming kids, messy pets, and a house in constant disarray. If anything, your stories tell me, Hey, you think you got it bad? <laughs> LOL. Wonderfully put, Maddie A. And in response to Maddie A, the gaming movement says, That is so amazing! I love that there are so many different walks of life on here. I'm a 19-year-old college student. Both of these comments are illustrative of the way our brand of storytelling reaches across the demographics to frighten everyone equally. It also shows the impact that you can make on other people, no matter the distance or the barriers laid before you. And in your own small way, you can make a difference in someone's life. We on this end thank both of you for listening and being a part of the Simply Scary Podcast experience. 
Uh, but we will need you both to send us a screenshot of your YouTube account page with your name pictured to contact at simplyscarypodcast.com in order to claim your prize. Keep the comments coming and be ready for us to interact with you in more ways than one. This is GM Danielson thanking you for joining us. And as we close this evening's frightful festivities, let me remind you that no matter how attractive the assistant, always keep your eye on the ball. For you never know whose eyeballs are on you. Join us next time and be prepared as your heart pounds heavy and your blood runs cold. For you are just experiencing the Simply Scary Podcast. This is executive producer Jesse Cornett. If you like what you hear, be sure to check out more from these authors at simplyscarypodcast.com. There you can find all information regarding the show and the stories appearing here in our podcast. The Simply Scary Podcast is a production of Chilling Entertainment. The showcase is written and produced by Jesse Cornett. The host of the Simply Scary Podcast is GM Danielson. Original music during the show by Jesse Cornett. This broadcast was directed and created by Craig Groshek. Be sure to look for the Simply Scary Podcast on iTunes. And if you like the show, leave us a five-star review. Comments or questions? Email us at contact at simplyscarypodcast.com and check our website for more information. While you're there, consider clicking on the patrons link at the top of the page to help support our show. Copyright Chilling Entertainment LLC 2017. Thanks for listening. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.